Elder holds a cigarette between her fingers, blowing a puff of smoke into the chilly night air. She glances at the cancer stick, with a minor look of shame and disgust. I really ought to quit these things, she tells herself quietly, as she tosses it to the ground. Her large platform boots crush it with a minor amount of force. She sighs quietly to herself, and pushes a strand of her lilac hair out of her hazel eyes. Elder uses her black painted nails to scratch at the freckles on her nose and cheeks. A trait that would make sense if people knew her natural hair colour was ginger, though not like it really mattered, since it seemed that few people paid attention to this small detail. Her hand absent-mindedly pulls a thread at the hem of her tank top, whilst the other. Pulls at the bottom of her tartan skirt. It wasn't like Elder to wear clothes like this, but her friends had encouraged it. They had dragged her out tonight for some party, and then ditched her halfway through. A rather strange sight, however, interrupted her pitiful thoughts. A few feet away from her, stood a little boy, with dark-coloured hair. And dark eyes. He seemed to stare into Edna's soul, with his unblinking gaze. She shivers slightly, and turns her attention more fully to her little admirer. Why are you staring at me like that, kid? The little boy takes a few steps towards her. Why is your hair purple? Elder couldn't help but smile at the innocence of the question. It wasn't something she was used to, as she rarely ventured outside her home. Having a well-paying job online can do that for you. Well, she began, whilst tossing another strand out of her eyes. I dyed it to look like this, because I like it. Purple is my favourite colour. The idea of this seemed to fascinate the boy, who took another step towards her. And why are you dressed like that? He asked. Admittedly, this question caught Elder off guard, more than the last one at least. I don't usually wear these clothes, but my friends wanted me to wear it for a party. The boy looked around for a moment, a confused look crossing his face. Where are your friends? Elder laughs quietly to herself, trying to think of an appropriate way to tell the child that her friends had ditched her. Well, they had to meet up with someone and decided to leave me behind. Of course, the details were more risque than this, but that was not knowledge a boy should be hearing. A sad look came onto the boy's face. They're not very good friends, then, are they? He remarks it with a bit of a whine, and Elder seems to consider the statement for a moment, before slowly nodding in agreement. I suppose you're right, she says, but they're the only friends who will talk to me. The boy perks up like a flower on a sunny morning for a moment, interested in the meaning behind Elder's words. Why? The question instantly made her nervous. She wasn't sure how to go about answering this. Most people don't like me, she says, slowly and deliberately. Again, the boy repeats his question. He was far too young to really understand why most people would walk on the other side of the street when seeing a girl like her. Arguably, it was a refreshing change. Finally. Elder sighs and sits down on the bench, close to where she was standing. I don't quite know, she admits. Just something about me makes most people scared. They act as if I'm a monster. The boy smiles wide, and goes to sit next to her. Well, I don't think you're a monster. I think you're really nice and pretty. 
Elder blushes a bright shade of pink. Pretty? Me? She thinks to herself. Just the thought made her feel embarrassed. And to think it was being said by a child. What did she have to be embarrassed about? Thank you, she tells the boy quietly. But before the boy could say anything else, a nervous-looking woman crosses the corner, her hair dishevelled and her clothes dirty. Once she sets her eyes on the boy, a smile crosses her face. But that smile quickly fades when her eyes set on Elder. Henry, get away from it right this instant, she yells to the boy. Henry looks sadly at the woman. Why, mother? She's just been talking to me, that's all. Henry's mother ignores his pleas and drags him by the arm away from Elder, who is just watching sadly from a distance as she slowly fades away. As he was being dragged, Henry lays eyes on a small memorial plaque placed by a lamppost. Alongside notes and stuffed toys was a picture of Elder, lilac hair covering her hazel eyes and freckles.